All right, guys, next thing we're gonna be doing, so we've got all the engine parts properly weathered. They all look like they've been worn, got oil stains all over them, got all kinds of grime and dirt in them. What we're gonna do next is start applying glue and putting on some arms. We'll go ahead and dry fit everything again. Go for that kind of thing. I wanna get the, uh, the shoulder parallel to that nut or that bolt and how it's pointing that direction so I want to get those two parallel get a good effect of running so I'm going to take off the old cap for glue just gonna get this into the frame without it being all ugly drop a bit in there try not to be too generous with this and then since this is kind of a heavier metal part I'm gonna have to hold on to it for quite a bit. Bring it down so that the camera will focus. Or maybe the camera won't focus at all. There it goes. Let's hold it out like that there. And this could take quite a bit of effort because this, this uh, joint is held together by only this one see appendage. So this could take quite a while. Matter of fact, I'm gonna attach the two and then kind of sit it down here on the on my lap because it is going to take a bit uh... you don't have to worry about the glue drying out either as long as it's uh, super glue it shouldn't, it shouldn't dry out like real fast uh, anywho um, this so far is going to be the first series that I do all the way through um, if I get new stuff I'd go ahead and do more of them um, I don't have anything getting I don't think I have anything scheduled for coming in until later on this month so, I don't have anything really new to do. There we go. Seems to have worked. And what's great about this is if you don't like how it's posed, the glue is going to be pliable for a while. So, I'm going to move it over just a little bit more. But I didn't exactly like this. is perfect, though. So, he looks more like he is sprinting at whoever he is faddling, battling, fighting and battling in the same sentence as faddling okay, I'm going to cap this for a second I'll have a look at this, now okay, here's an important thing to know you got this joint, it's a ball joint it's covered in black spray paint, that's not a good thing what you need to do, because you don't want uh, paint ever gluing to paint the inside joint I've already taken care of, so it'll be metal. It's metal on the inside joint, on the inside joint, excuse me. So you're going to want to make an area on this ball joint that's got no paint on it. So you're just going to take your hobby knife and give that a scrape. Make sure you get all the spray paint off of it where it's going to be contacting its receiving element. Let's give that a quick wipe over. And there, takes care of it just like that. Now we got metal showing through, and now the metal is going to join with the metal. So you won't have to worry about uh, the pieces falling off extremely easily. And that does become a problem with your, when you're gaming or when you're moving stuff around. The fit won't be nearly as tight as if it was metal to metal. Go ahead and bring this back in. We're going to do the other side. Drop just a bit in there. And then just insert the next joint. I want to make it to where it's kind of arcing a little bit, sort of angled up to, to really, really exaggerate that this is a grenade launcher. It's meant to shoot in a, in a trajectory that's angled because it's going to be lobbing stuff. It's not going to be shooting straight like a, a traditional cannon. It's going to be trying to lob stuff over, you know, over obstacles or just trying to get the maximum amount of range with his weapon. So, and there we are. Starting to look like a model. Now that I got both of those attached, give it about eh, 10 minutes to really solidify. Really uh, stick in there. Now, the next thing I should talk about is what we're going to do last because these things are drying. We can't really get to them right now. What we're going to do last is called basing. Now, if I grab a model here, you can see on this model's base, which is the part that it sits on, that it stands on, it's got rubble and shell casings. And I'm going to teach you guys how to do that, and that's a really cool effect. I really like how this comes out on these type of models. 
and it really simulates the the environment they're in a lot too. They're usually in a rocky sort of uh, really rocky mountainous terrain. The northern part of Signar, which is where my army, uh, my well, this is actually part of a regiment. This is actually all part of our trencher regiment. They're located in the northern areas of Signar, and Signar in the north is kind of mountainy, and it gets pretty pretty rugged. Uh, let's see here. That's pretty much all I can say right now. Um, this part, the basing part, is going to consist of a couple things, and I'll go over that real fast. To base, you're going to need some sort of sand. This is just a sort of pea gravel stuff. It's used uh, for decorating plants. I got a hair in there. It's used for decorating plants. You just pour it in the plant bowl, and uh, now you have something besides dirt to look at in your nice plants. This was like a couple dollars at Walmart, not expensive. And that's what the rock is in there. And then you're going to need some glue. I use this really nice tacky glue. This stuff works really well. It's really, really super, super strong, and it dries clear, and it's, it's easy to work with. And then you're going to need uh, paint. I use a brown paint. And where did that brown get off to? Here it is. It's really dark brown to give a real good... Uh, a real good impersonation of uh, a real muddy, real muddy sort of dark dirt environment. You don't want something like this here. This looks more like sand. You want a real dark, muddy sort of color for this environment, for, for where my, we're hanging out at. I also have, oops, knocking over glue. I also have some gravel that's pre colored. I painted this stuff up brown to make it look more like uh, rocks instead of gravel. Like uh, kind of like dirt clods. I'm not gonna be using this. I'm gonna be using this cup though, so I'm kind of just showing you what's in there for now. Uh, as a matter of fact, I actually pour all that into a separate cup because I need this cup because I just decided right now, literally, that I'm gonna do the basing right now. Because I'm tired of waiting for stuff to find to, to dry and finish. So, got yourself a cup. What you're gonna need to do is, oh, if I can get this open. It seems to be glued shut. Okay, this isn't one. This isn't wanting to work with me, so I'm getting a set of pliers. Fuck you. You will do as I command. Bottle of glue. There we go. So, oh, damn it. Oh man, it's glued on the inside there. I got it. Okay. So, and that's how that's a good example of how strong this crap is. So I'm just gonna. Take a glue stick thing, grab some of this glue, and literally just plop it in this cup. Now, what this is for is you need to water this stuff down, okay? This this stuff is super, super tacky. It's really, really tacky. And uh, it's until it gets watered down, if you were to just apply this over the base of your miniature, it would sit on top of the water and sit on top of the terrain and leave as much as like an eighth, an eighth to a quarter of an inch of actual like height and you don't want your terrain kind of flying you want it to be real even and settled onto the model or settled onto the base so it's going to pour some water in there and I'm going to start stirring this up that's all I'm going to start doing try and liquefy this glue as best as possible go at this. And you can use Elmer's glue too. Like I've used Elmer's glue before. I like this glue a little bit better because it's extremely, extremely tacky. It It's really good because it, the stuff that you, you glue onto it will never come off. And I've had some problems in the past with other glues, not necessarily Elmer's glue, but with my, my bits of, my bits of terrain kind of flaking off during games or something or if I drop something, they just kind of fall off. They don't even flake off. They just really just fall off, and there goes the base. Now, you're going to want probably a ratio of, like, maybe three parts water to one part glue when you do this with this particular glue. With Elmer's glue, Elmer's glue is a little bit thinner, so you could do it maybe at, like, a two parts water, one part glue. So there was no measuring involved with this just now. As you saw, I just kind of plopped it in there and then mixed it around. And as this is going, I've remembered that there was a stint. 
of area inside here that I forgot to fix. So I'm going to leave that there for a second at an angle, hopefully, so the water sits in there with it. There we go. So underneath here, in the base, you got a slit. That slit there is just, uh, it's, they make them into all the bases because um, some models have different types of uh, pegs and others. So they just make that slit all the way down there. Now remember this stuff. This is the stuff you kept because you wanted to make sure, you know, you could use it for terrain or something. What we're going to do, we're going to take this thing, you know, we're going to slit it into the base to make the base all one piece. And to do that, I'm just going to take, because this, this stuff is super, this thing is super tough and that, that uh, metal is really soft. I'm just going to take these cutters that I have on my knife and just give that a cut so that we can trim it down to the size we need. I think it's about that big. If not, we can make it smaller. So just put the cut down and then bend it. And there it goes. Snapped it real easy. So now we got a smaller piece that I'm pretty sure should fit in there. A little bit smaller than that. Actually, we could probably use the other side. Oh, oh I'll just add it to it. We'll just do the other side and we'll just trim it down a little bit here. So we'll take off the peg. This part here. Take off the peg. Come off peg. Wiggle it off. Okay. And then shorten this just ever slightly. Ever slightly. A little bit more. I know you can't see me what I'm doing, but this is all just trimming down a piece of metal. And it's a little bit difficult to show on camera because it's a little bit hard to do with the camera in the way. But this is just, I mean, you could use other things too, like pieces of plastic. You could use uh, other pieces of metal that are, oh, they're the better, a better size for this. This is really kind of uh, the only thing I have in sight right now. I do have green stuff, and green stuff is a putty, but I'd rather not get that out and wait for that to dry and everything. So then we cut it down, and it fits in there nicely, nice and snug too. So that way, once that's inserted as well, inside the base you have a nice flat area for the, the foliage and, and your dirt and your rock to sit on, and that's going to look beautiful. There we go. So that's in there. Go ahead and leave it like that for right now. Even it out really well. And then in a moment, we'll come along and glue it. First, we're going to get into doing the basing, because all this stuff is put together and everything. And I'm pretty sure I can do this in five minutes. Okay. So now the glue's done. Now what you do is you get yourself an old nasty brush. Get myself uh, that's a good brush there. Old nasty brush. Come on, Templar. Old nasty brush. That'll work. Nope, that's too small. Mm, how to do this then? So I got myself a brush. Grab some of the glue. Make sure there's a lot of it on there. And then just paint it on. Paint it on quite liberally because you want this stuff that you're putting on to stick. You want it to stick really well too. So just paint this on really liberally. Usually I would paint the base uh, brown first. But to be honest, I forgot. So I've done it before without painting it brown, so it doesn't come out any different. So the way I do it especially, it doesn't come out any different at all. So no big worry. And it's okay if you get some on the feet. Uh, just make sure when you're painting and stuff, you don't paint on the feet or if you miss mess up a little bit, you just go over with it. With the right color, with the blue, of course. Or with whatever color you're using. So that's enough glue on there. Plenty enough glue. Now what we're gonna do, is take some of this gravel, kind of angle this box open so that I can fit the miniature in there. Let's see if I can get you to see this here. So I got the box open now. Just gonna take them. Hopefully, no, can it's not gonna work. What we're gonna do instead is pour out this stuff into here. Grab some sand with this one. Because the, the axe and stuff, the pickaxe was a little wide, so I couldn't fit it in there. Let's do is drop this in here, like this. And then pour a little bit more in there. I'm making a mess, it's kind of fun. And 
shake it in there. And there we go. So now that's all nicely ruined. The desk at least is. Let's scoop all that back in there. So I don't got any pieces of rock lying everywhere. It's probably gonna freak out the camera too. The camera's probably like, oh god, too many colors, but there we are. Manipulate some rocks that are kind of in the wrong spot, just moving around with my finger. Extra rocks that don't need to be there. Just kind of knock them in. There we are. Okay, there you go. You got stuff on the base now. And that looks pretty good, actually. I like how they came out. And then, I'm just going to take the rest of this glue and pour it over into this base. Just fill that up. Just overflow it. Literally overflow it. Because I want everything to stick everywhere. And then I'm just going to run my finger around the edges of the base to get that stuff that's boozing everywhere. And there we go. Usually you could you would do this with a better, <laughs> like a paper towel and stuff, but I just I don't give a care. So that's a good quick bit of the basing. And now we got the glues uh, with our arms glued on, excuse me. And the next thing we'll do is we'll finish up the base and then we'll get into doing the other arms. So it's been uh, Black Templar. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. See you in the next video.